Welcome back. Joining me now in our panel of politicians, the Liberals Paul Fletcher and Labor's Sid Sidebottom. Good afternoon to both of you. Before we get started, I do want to play you another grab from Tony Abbott's doorstop this morning. One of the key criticisms directed at the opposition leader is to do with his choice of words when he said the government should die of shame in the parliament yesterday. Mr Abbott defended himself this morning. This phrase has been used by me on at least 17 separate occasions before yesterday, including in a nationalised address. In my televised budget reply, uh, I said that uh, this is a government that needs to change before it dies of shame. Now, um, the last thing I want to do is to cause offence to anyone, uh, but I was absolutely oblivious uh, as I was making that speech uh, to comments that other people might have made, uh, which were very different uh, and which have been universally condemned, including by me. Alan Jones said a very insensitive, a very offensive thing. But it really is time for the Labor Party to stop hyperventilating. Paul Fletcher, is that really a good enough excuse? Can we really be expected to think that those Jones comments, which dominated the political debate for more than a week, had simply slipped Mr Abbott's mind yesterday? Well, look, there's been uh, a lot of emphasis from the Prime Minister and Labor on these kinds of issues, but essentially uh, that missed the point. Um, yesterday's debate was about the question of whether the Speaker was appropriate to be in the role and remain in the role and whether that added to the credibility of the Parliament or whether it was time for the Speaker to step down. That was the motion that the Coalition moved. That was the context in which Mr Abbott was speaking. And incidentally, it was a judgment which proved to be the correct judgment, as we saw in the action the Speaker himself chose to take correctly later in the day. It was just untenable to have uh, somebody continuing in that role based upon what we now know about what he's been saying in a whole series of text messages. So, Paul, you're saying that when you heard Mr Abbott say quite a few times yesterday this concept of dying of shame in the Parliament, after we'd seen so much outrage about those Jones comments, that you didn't cringe even slightly to hear those words coming out of your leader's mouth? Uh, look, I don't think there's any connection at all, but clearly it suits the Labor Party to try and continue to distract from what is the central issue here. The central issue here is whether it was appropriate that... Uh, Mr Slipper continue as Speaker in the context of what we now know about the things that he had said and the attitudes that he had, had, had expressed. Clearly it was not appropriate. Uh, the Prime Minister yesterday sought to distract from that issue by focusing on something completely different in her speech on that motion. But the real question is this, had the opposition not taken the initiative, would anything have happened or would Mr Slipper still be the Speaker? And I suspect he would and that would not. Uh, be to the advantage of the parliament and it would not increase the confidence of the people of Australia in the work of their parliament. Sid Sidebottom, haven't we seen hypocrisy from Labor here, as Paul Fletcher points out? Everyone on your side today agrees that Mr Slipper did make the right call by resigning, but when it came to that vote, we saw Labor yesterday trying to protect him. We've seen today some of your colleagues saying, well, Parliament isn't a kangaroo court, but if you can't make a decision on that evidence that no-one was disputing when it comes to those text messages, then when was Labor going to act and make a judgment? Well... I think, uh, first and foremost, uh, the reported statements uh, of Mr Slipper uh, are totally inappropriate and uh, all sides of Parliament uh, have, uh, uh, have agreed to that. But let's not forget, yesterday was a deliberate tactic of the opposition uh, to uh, use question time deliberately to raise an issue about the Speaker and for Paul and his colleagues and Tony Abbott to believe that given that this is a deliberate tactic that the uh, leader of the opposition would not have the wherewithal or the forethought to realise what he was saying was insensitive himself and inappropriate in terms of some of the language he used, then that reflects very poorly on Mr Abbott and all those that advise him. So he can't just dismissed this. He knew what he was going to say. It was a deliberate tactic. He knew the language that he was going to use. And I'm, I'm afraid uh, it was highly insensitive. Now, if he's not aware of that himself and his colleagues aren't aware of that, then we've got an issue here. 
did start at the bottom. I would have thought the broader issue is that Labor is now back to square one with this wafer-thin majority. It was a mistake to put Mr Slipper in that role initially, wasn't it? In hindsight, does that decision make some of your colleagues question the Prime Minister's judgement, let alone her judgement of sticking by him yesterday? Well, hindsight's uh, a mighty thing, I'm sure. Uh, I could use many, many examples uh, uh, for the uh, well, Leader of the Opposition to, to contemplate on. Well, uh, allow me to, to finish that. Um, I'm sure I could use many examples in terms of hindsight that uh, Mr Abbott uh, could well uh, benefit from. Uh, look, when uh, Mr Slipper uh, was made Speaker, uh, we weren't and no one was aware of what he was doing privately in terms of his communications. And in actual fact, uh, Mr Slipper, I believe, and I was a member of the Speaker's panel uh, for some time, uh, Mr Slipper did an excellent job uh, in the House uh, as Speaker and conducting himself in terms of his ceremonial role as well. So, yeah, look, things are easier with hindsight. We can be a lot more wise in hindsight. Uh, but, of course, uh, his private communications uh, and what he does with those communications, uh, how are we to know, uh, how could you know, and indeed, um, indeed, uh, know what he did know. Uh, well, actually, if Paul, I could just respond Paul to Fletcher. that. Yeah, I will yeah. let you respond to that. I also, though, Paul, want to in particular bring to you to this issue of accepting votes. Isn't this a ridiculous argument we've heard from the Coalition today of where to draw the line? Mr Abbott saying, well, Craig Thompson's vote is more tainted than Mr Slipper's. Uh, look, let's start with the question of Julia Gillard's judgment. Julia Gillard showed terrible judgment yesterday to defend Peter Slipper and focus on trying to keep him as, Slipper, uh, as Speaker when uh, clearly it was not appropriate that he remain as Speaker. But there were serious questions raised about her judgment in November last year when she took the decision to appoint him as Speaker. This was seen as a masterstroke by some, but there were plenty of people around the Parliament on both sides of the House who were saying this will come back to bite Labor. And only a few months later it has. You know, in public life, uh, when you are Discharge, discharging a, a job with serious responsibilities, one of the things you've got to be good at is making judgments about people. And I don't think this was a good judgment that uh, the Prime Minister took, and that has been demonstrated so in spades. On this judgment of accepting votes, Mr Abbott saying that he won't accept Craig Thompson's, he will accept Mr Slipper's. How does that work? Where exactly does one draw the line here? Well, let's, let's start by making the point that it's based upon how Mr Slipper has voted since he stepped down, uh, it seems a fairly hypothetical issue because he's voted with Labor. But the key point, uh, the key distinction is uh, that Mr Thompson has been the subject of serious adverse findings of fact by a regulator and is the subject of ongoing police investigations. Uh, now, the, the notion that you should um, uh, apply the same position uh, to Mr Slipper as you should uh, to him, uh, it really is a sideshow from the central issue, which is, was it appropriate that Mr Slipper re remain as Speaker? Clearly it wasn't. Was it appropriate that the Prime Minister sought to defend him in the face of the mounting evidence? That was clearly inappropriate and an error of judgment. And it's all been a distraction from the Parliament doing what it is supposed to do, which is getting on with passing laws and de delivering improved outcomes for ordinary Australians. Well, soon the Parliament's going to be getting on with question time. Just quickly before we go there, live though, Sid Sidebottom, are you expecting any leadership issues to be ignited from the drama of the past couple of days? Well, I suspect Tony Abbott will still lead uh, the coalition, if that's what you mean. Uh, and no, uh, Julia exactly Gillard as well. exactly what I was suggesting, Sid Sidebottom. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, right. Um, uh, and uh, let me assure you, Julia Gillard is well and truly uh, in control uh, of uh, our party and is a fine leader. Make no mistake about it. OK, it's so Sidebottom and Paul Fletcher. We do need to let you run off to question time. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We do appreciate it. This afternoon's question